12.4, we are back, and of course, they open up with a suck fest. 150 wall balls, Karen, no joke. Then a little middle piece, little double unders. That's where we're gonna really catch up with our business. And then, that's the man maker, the muscle ups. 30 muscle ups. So, good job, they put two of those workouts in the same workout under 12 minutes, and hopefully you can go through it one time and start another set. That may not be my case, I don't have the engine, but maybe the big top dogs will be able to do that. So, first things first, Kelly Starrett, Mobility Wad, he's gonna be addressing what to do with the squat for the, for the wall ball. So he's gonna be addressing hip stuff, a little head positioning, what to do with the arms, and how to get away with 150 and not be smoked. Once you get to the double under, what's gonna happen is that it's only 90, but you are toasty. You're feeling like your upper back is a little fired up, legs are a little tired. So we're just gonna work on a little technique for double unders and how to release the shoulder out of the picture and just put it in the wrist and hopefully if we have a consistent jump we can get that going crank out the 90 and then feel freshes for the muscle ups we're going to do the muscle ups in the rain so it may get a little sketchy but you guys it may do it inside doesn't matter who you are and where you're doing it you're going to need to have the skill the skill is going to carry your strength so that's what we're going to talk about as well we're going to do it my little muscle up prep movement and hopefully that will help you carry through the workout and get that extra rep or maybe if you're that guy or girl you'll have your first muscle up which happens to uh, be the case in a, a lot of these situations here with the open so first things first we're going to get on the jump rope and what we're going to do is after you get a little sweaty and a little warmed up shoulder passes all the good business we're just going to talk about some efficiency in jump rope i'm going to take this little rubber jump rope that we have it's just an ordinary jump rope and i'm going to do this very basic drill that i've shown in a couple of videos before but i'm just going to dress it from a little different perspective and i'm going to dress it from a little bit of this wrist movement so if you just kind of look at my arm here when i'm standing tall I'm externally rotated with my palms facing forward. This is my jumping stance for double unders. The problem with this is that as soon as we start spinning the jump rope around twice, everything gets super tight, everything gets super tense, the arms start locking out, and all of a sudden my biceps, my triceps, my shoulders, my back just gets fried and I have to stop. The rhythm breaks. So what I want to do is this. I want to take a single jump rope, fold it in half, we're going to grab it, and what we're going to do is we're going to place the center of it right in the middle of the hand, index finger just kind of around it, and I'm going to hold on to it loose. And this is all I'm going to do. I'm just going to loosen up the wrist, and this may look silly, but I want to loosen up the wrist and see if I can separate the wrist from the shoulder. If I have that, I'm going to start spinning this little sucker. So I'm going to start spinning this guy. I'm not spinning through the elbow. It's not my elbow and the wrist staying straight. It's the wrist moving around. So I'm here, just relaxed wrist. I don't know if you can see that, but that's more my wrist moving than anything else. If I got that and I understand that, this is what's gonna save me during the double unders. This is my single speed. This is my single speed. This is my double under speed. That's what we're looking at. So if I can do this with my right hand and left hand and try to address basic position in the shoulder, relaxed, and the sh let the wrist take care of the business, then you will get that feeling during the workout. And the 90 double unders will be your recovery piece. If you can't hit that wrist movement and you can't get that movement going, then you will not have access to some serious stamina that you have to have to get through the 30 muscle ups. So that's number one. Really quickly, if you can, go back a couple of videos. We have a bunch of double under videos and just look at how we build them up. We go one rope, two ropes, we put the rope together and then we start getting the double unders going. So I'm not gonna address that here. Go back a couple videos, watch those. It's gonna help you a ton. The biggest piece today is the muscle up prep. Before you go into the rings, of course we need to be hot and sweaty and Kelly is gonna address what it looks like to prep the shoulder, what it looks like to prep the hip. So we're gonna just prep the movement. And there are four basic steps that we're gonna do and then we're gonna add a fifth one that's gonna be the money maker. So come on over, let me show you what we got and we'll talk about that. Rings, somewhere around hip height, band. Doesn't matter what band you have, but it should be fairly tight band so you have a lot of access to support. 
I want this to be pure skill. If you watch me from the side, here's the first movement. Take a seat on it. Lean back. All I want to see is this. Can you get into this hollow body position, which is just a transition position, and then from there, extend the hips. This extension is super important. A lot of our athletes can't even access the butt there to get the hips extended, and this is how far they go. I need to see hips up high. Now, if I have that, am I capable of going from this position to an extended body position with speed? It looks like this. I'm basically just sending my hips up into the rings as fast as I can. Notice this is a stance. Really important. Do not pull with your arms. As soon as you pull with your arms, like Mike Bergner would say, if I pull early, I lose all my power. It's all hip, hip extension. So do it slow first, and then add a little speed. If you add the speed, you'll feel the lift, and the arms will just naturally just follow, just like Olympic weightlifting. Next piece, a little bit more tension on the band. From here, hips up, high, high, as high as you can from here. The fastest sit-up you've ever done. When we're looking at this sit-up, notice what happened. My hoodie went over my head because I threw my whole body through. I did not pull. I bent in the hips. I flexed the hips really aggressively. So I went from a fully extended body position to a fully flexed body position. My receiving position right now is not too important. But if you want to get geeky about it, just think elbows in. The more the elbows are in, the more stable you are, and the more control you have in the shoulder and more access. Next piece, from hips extended. We're gonna go do the fastest sit-up we've ever done, but once we initiate the sit-up, we're gonna pull with the heels to our butt, and we're gonna receive in a tucked position. So I'm here. Hips are up as high as I can. Fastest sit-up, heel drive. That's what we're looking at. The sit up comes first, the heels come second. Extremely important that when you do this, do not drop the knees down. What I'm talking about is this. As I do the transition, it's all hip heel, but when I receive, I can't receive with my knees down. Knees down is a collapsed shoulder and probably a failed attempt. So. Knees up high is going to help you out. Shift that left toe. Fourth one, dip balance. I've talked about this right one before. Right you can side. support yourself bend with a band. Right left knee. I'm going to start knee from bend. a full lockout. Right leg straight. The Look standard the says that you don't have to turn the rings out. Shift I like to turn the rings out because it does two things. One is the epitome of a good position. And two, it's telling me that my elbow is really locked out and I'm applying force properly. So I like to give it a little turnout to guarantee lockout. So I'm gonna start from that position and I'm gonna do a dip balance. And the dip balance is gonna go like this. Drop the shoulder and as I drop the shoulder, I'm pulling the legs up. So I'm basically compressing into the ring. This is what we're looking at. Here, pull. As my top drops, my bottom brim comes up. So as I drop the top, I pull the bottom up. That's my dip balance. Okay. If I receive bend. with my legs right. hanging bend. down, I'm gonna feel heavy in the shoulder the and I'm gonna burn bend. myself out quick. So, right one more time, almost at slow no. motion so you can see it. Yeah, let's do that again. I'm here, as my chest comes down, my legs come up and I compress fully into the bottom of that dip. Thighs close to my chest, heels close to my butt. If I do it fast, I should be completely stable and I should feel almost no load on the shoulder. Now let's get fancy. This is the fifth step and this is where we can link everything together. So we're going to go from a hollow body position under the rings, we're going to do a quick snap hips to the rings and then the fastest forward roll over the rings we've ever done which was the sit up with the heel drive. So this is what we're talking about. Lying down, hollow body position, the fastest snap and the fastest sit up. So I'm doing Everything I just did in the beginning, connecting it all together. Nope. And this so way, I'm going to guarantee that I have access to the hip and that I understand what it's like to link to the next movement. Right. We're talking about That's your muscle up prep. This is the one I do with all of my athletes, doesn't matter the level. And now one last thing, let's go over to the bar. Here, this is what's going to happen. What's the 
what, what's failing on this? When we finish the dip, and we have to do 30 at the end of a workout, it's a lot of volume. So, of course, we want to kip. A lot of people have a trouble with the kip going, and guess what it is? It's the reverse of the dip balance. This is what we're looking at. If I receive in this position, I can't kip from there. I have no access to my hip. So what I'm gonna do is, as I come over and land on the ball, I'm gonna drop my legs down and now pump myself up. As I receive in the ball, I drop my legs up. Now I can fully load the hips, pop myself up. If we look at it over here at the rings, same thing happens. Just don't These rings are a little low, so I may not be able to access fully, and I don't have to fully extend the leg, just enough to access the hip. So, I'm going to do the whole thing together, but I'm going to pause at the bottom of my dip. Hollow body, hip drive, extend the legs a little bit, now pop. I got that connection going. So one more time, snap, rotate, yeah. drop the legs a little bit, pop, get back up. That way you're guaranteeing that you don't have to use your arms so much. You're really driving through the hips and hopefully you get that extra rep at the end. 12 Fort is gonna be awesome. Let's get it.